thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And today I'm filming the Midyear Freak Out tag, which I really enjoy watching. I know lots of people film this tag, but every time I watch someone's video, I really enjoy it. It's not a tag that I get bored of. So hopefully the fact that this will be one that's very much repeated on BookTube, people will still get some enjoyment from the answers, fingers crossed. So there are 15 questions, the same for everybody. Um, so let's dive right into the first question. The big question, what is your best book of the year so far? This is so hard. This is so hard. And I have like two really, really strong contenders. So I've chosen one arbitrarily and the other one is going to be an answer for a different question. So far, I think I think my favourite book of the year is Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. We all know Marcus Zusak from writing The Book Thief, which I always say is my favourite book of all time. It's definitely the book that I've reread the most. And this is his um, next book after The Book Thief, which I got in hardback, but I've only just read. And this is about five boys, the Dunbar brothers, who um, their mum dies of cancer. Their dad leaves because he can't cope with his grief and the boys have to sort of raise each other. And they live at this, it's set in Australia. It's in a very um, non-traditional style of writing. So Marcus Zusak, if you've read The Book Thief, you know that his writing style is quite unique. And this isn't exactly the same writing style, but it's very... Um, it's quite an unusual writing style and I think that it will be one that you either completely gel with like I did or one that puts you off. But this book, I, it made me cry. I loved all of these brothers. I loved the interactions between them. If you want a book about brothers, this is just the perfect book. It's got love, grief, family, fights, um, but above all, yeah, love above all and sticking together through dif difficult times. Um, and I won't do a full wrap up of it now, obviously, because this will make the tag much too long, but this book, I uh, absolutely treasure and I will hundred percent be rereading this book. Second book is what is your best sequel so far? Well, I've only read one sequel, um, which is... Um, is therefore my default answer but I did very much enjoy it and that is Read With Pride by Lucy Parry who is also a booktuber and this is the second in their Paper and Heart Society series. It's a young adult book about a group of a sort of misfits who are in um, their last years of um, school so in sixth form and they are they form a book club in the first book and it focuses on a different character this year. And the theme of the book is that the school have put stickers saying the parental approval is required for all of the school library books which have an LGBT theme. And our protagonist of the book club is um, bisexual. And so she starts a campaign with other people to try and stop the school from making this seem like something that's wrong or shameful by having the parental advisory um, slips needed for the LGBTQ books. So it's a book about books, it's a book about friendship and it's a queer book and it's really, really good. <clears throat> two of the other, I have a goal to read two other uh, next books in the sequels by the end of the year. So I need to read more sequels. <laughs> Book number three, a new release that I haven't read yet. So I don't tend to buy loads of new releases, mainly because either I don't hear about them in time or I order them from the library just so that I don't spend sort of £20 on one book. But one book that I did pre-order, like a lot of people, and um, I know this is everywhere on BookTube at the moment, but my answer for this would be Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. So I got the beautiful Waterstones edition. It's also signed somewhere where was she signed it it's signed here by Rebecca as well and I know that this is going to be what is all over booktube already I'm going to be one of the last people to get in the first wave of reviews um I don't know why I haven't started it yet but I just haven't um so this is definitely one that I want to read ASAP most anticipated release of the next part of the year is the next question. So as I just said, I'm not a person who really knows what's coming out unless it's an author who I read everything they write or anything like that. I don't really know what's going to be coming out. But one thing I do know is um, 
my answer to this question which is called Silverborn by Jessica Townsend and this is their fourth I'm looking at my shelves yeah fourth book in the Morrigan Crow series I each book tends to come out in around October and I always buy it for my birthday in hardback um the annoying thing is one of the books is in paperback which I really want to get in hardback um but yes I can't remember if I've pre-ordered this yet or not I need to check because I don't want to pre-order it twice um but this is the fourth book in the series as I said this is a middle grade I say older middle grade series about Morrigan Crow who goes to a place called Nevermore um it's a little bit like Harry Potter-ish um if you're in so that you'll know what kind of theme the books are but I really enjoy them all and um we've had to wait I think two or three years between the last book coming out and um the next one coming out so that is the one that I am most looking forward to in the next half of the year my biggest disappointment um I should have actually I actually looked at the books that I read but I should have looked at the books that I dnf'd for this answer shouldn't I let me think. Okay, so I'm going to change my answer. Let's say the two two of the books that I've DNF'd recently have been essay collections. So one of them was Why Women Grow or Women Who Grow and it was an um, essay collection about women and gardening. And the second one was A Life of One's Own which was a collection about nine women writers who started again. Both of those sound wonderful things that I'm really interested in but I first of all thought maybe I don't like essay collections but then I remembered other essay collections that I've really enjoyed and then I realised I think it's because both of these essay collections are written by journalists and they are quite journalistic in style so they're quite factual they're quite um as if you'd were reading an article rather than uh, a chatty or um, sort of academic essay they're not really like that um, I didn't feel they had enough heart in the stories for me they were more reporting facts and making them into an essay and then I sort of thought well that would obviously make sense because they're both journalists and I was disappointed with both of those collections and I DNF'd them both and therefore I think that was probably my they were my biggest disappointments of the year so I've changed my answer for that one <clears throat> question number six what was my biggest surprise so this is kind of a hard one because you don't go into a book thinking you're not going to like it and then go oh actually I did really like it because you wouldn't have picked it up in the first place if you thought you wouldn't like it but I would say that it's an audiobook which I listened to which is a memoir called don't let us go to the dogs tonight by Alexandra Fuller I hadn't, I don't know where I heard of this. I think I might have heard it recommended on like a podcast or something like that. And it was free on Audible. It was in one of the books that are included. And this is a, the first in a series of memoirs by Alexandra Fuller about her time growing up in a, in um, what was then Rhodesia as a child. So she has a, her parents are white British and they moved out to Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. Um, and she was born there and it was about living through um, the sort of the um, the racism and the um, government of when Mugabe came in and what it was like growing up as a child in colonial South, um, not South Africa, sorry, colonial um, Rhodesia. And um, it was really well written and... I really enjoyed listening to the experience and what it was like in those times and it was a big it was a surprise because I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did and I'd like to go on and read more which I think are also free on Audible in the same series. Right, new favourite author. So for it to be a favourite author I have to read several pieces of their work to know that they're one of my favourite authors. However, I have three authors who I've read for the first time, who two of which I want to read everything they've written, and one I really loved their work. So the first one is Caleb Azuma Nelson, who I read Open Water 
and as you know from my wrap up last month I absolutely adored it I met him when he came to Norwich and he was lovely and I am really looking forward to reading his next book um, which I'm waiting for at the library I'm on, in, on the reserve list for that book I also read for the first time um, Fatima Farheen Mirza who wrote A Place for Us this was my other contender for my favourite book of the year I will come on to talk about it a little bit more later. And um, I thought her writing was so phenomenal, just like Caleb's, so phenomenal that I can't wait to read more. So she hasn't got any other books out yet. Um, I need to actually look at what, if she's writing something at the moment because I cannot wait to read whatever she writes next. And then the last one um, was a, a writer whose writing I really enjoyed and that was Sean Anikrist. He wrote an essay collection called Bread and Wine that I really loved this year and I want to definitely explore more of her work. I don't think she's ever written fiction, I think it's all non-fiction but this was a, a book about food and friendship and family and I really, really loved it and so I'd like to read more by her and she could potentially become a favourite. Question number eight is your fictional crush. So a lot of people say they don't get fictional crushes. I would say I do get fictional crushes, but I didn't get any this year. <laughs> so none of the people who I've read about in the books this year are uh, characters that I've had fictional crushes on. So I can't give you an answer for that question. But question number nine is your newest favourite character. And I think two characters which featured in Lessons in Chemistry would probably be my answer for this. So... Lessons in Chemistry was obviously a very big popular book this year and Elizabeth Zott is the main character. She is a woman chemist in the 1960s. Yeah, in the 1960s. And she is like a real kick-ass, intelligent, fiery, passionate woman who I found very inspiring. And my other f favourite character was also from this book and it, whoops, it was her dog who's called 630, which is the best name for, you'd never think of calling an animal 630, but it just absolutely works for him. And he's a really, really intelligent dog who is part of the, very big part of this book. And um, I'm going to give you one thing to say, he doesn't die. Because often when you have animals in books, they die and it's horrible. And 6.30 does not die in this book. I just want to <laughs> preface by saying he's still alive at the end. Um, and he was a fantastic character in this book. And so I, um, yeah, I loved 6.30 and Elizabeth Zott. They're probably my favourite two characters this year. So a book that made me cry was um, my answer for um, A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. I'm going to keep talking about this book because it's so, so good. I heard about it through Jan Campbell. She talked about it a lot a few years ago and now I understand why because it was so, so amazing. So this is a book following an Indian family who have moved to America. We have the parents and their three children, um, Hardia, Huda and Amal and... The three children have been born in America and are growing up there. Their family is Muslim. They're quite strict Muslims or quite traditional. Um, they are part of a very active Muslim community in the area of America where they live. And they don't really um, have... Well, they, the parents don't have any friends who are sort of um, non-Muslim. And the children do at school... Um, but their parents aren't very keen on them sort of going to other people's houses or going to parties and that kind of thing. So they're very sort of um, in their community, or, um, in a community of their own. And um, it's about the family relationships and the community relationships. And the main focus is on the father-son relationship, which is written the most, I think it's the most touching portrayal of a father-son relationship that I've ever read. Um, we start with Hardia's wedding and we know that Amal has been out of the family for a number of years. We don't know why. And then we go back in time to when the parent, before the parents even had children and we see how Amal came to be cast out of the family and the heartbreak that it causes not only for the family but for us as the readers. And... This is a family who I still think about. This is a book that I 100% want to reread. It's 
absolutely a contender for my favourite book of the year. Um, I loved everything about it and I can't encourage you enough to read it. Right, next question is a book that made me happy. Okay, so I would say a, an audio book which I really recently finished which made me feel really happy was called Call Me Maybe by Cara Bastone. So Cara Bastone has three books on Audible, two of which are now um, free and they're more like plays so they've been specially adapted for Audible and they have, um, so this one is about two characters who um there's Vera and Cal and they basically meet because Vera is setting up a website for her new business and she can't get the website to to work properly so she's called customer services and the person who picks up the phone is Cal and Cal is played by one narrator Vera is played by another narrator and it's more like a play between the two of them it's um a lot, some of it's in real time and it has things like if there's traffic you can hear the traffic noises, you can hear pings when they get messages on their phones, you can hear them typing on their keyboard, um, you can hear phones ringing. So different, it's got like all the sort of sound effects in as well so it's quite immersive but it's a really upbeat, happy story where nothing bad happens really. Um, it's just one that makes you feel full of kind of enthusiasm and good vibes and if you want a book which will immerse you and also make you feel really happy and uplifted then I would 100% recommend that book. Question number 12 is my favourite book to movie adaptation. So I don't think of any of the books I've read this year have been book to film adaptations or TV adaptations. I know Lessons in Chemistry has a an adaptation on Apple TV but I haven't got Apple TV so I haven't um, watched it but I would like to. Um, what I would say is I watched my favourite film of the year is based on a book and I didn't know that until the titles came up and I now can't wait to read the book and I'm really bad I haven't I don't know the author I'll put a picture up on screen because I don't know the author but it's called The Eight Mountains. This film is the best film by a mile that I've seen this year. Um, it is a, an Italian film, it's all subtitled and it's about two um, two boy or two men, Pietro and Bruno, who are, they meet in the summer when they're boys, when they're sort of, I don't know, 10 or 11. And um, so one of the boys is from um, the city and he comes to this very remote mountain village for the summer with his parents and he meets a bo the other boy who um, looks after cows. He doesn't really read and write too well. He lives in a very, very isolated village in Italy and they become really close friends. And then it's there, it's a film about their friendship as they grow into men and about the relationships with um the families as well and they go on to build this um very isolated cabin themselves in the middle of this gorgeous italian mountain village and it's about the consequences of building the cabin as well i've heard it described a little bit like a straight version of breakback mountain so i would say i can see the similarities there um I thought it was, it's the cinematography is amazing, the soundtrack I haven't stopped listening to and if you want a story about male friendship and set in the most beautiful mountain region that you can imagine um, and a film that feels so intimate and nostalgic and just wonderful then I would 100% recommend this film and it, as it's based on a book I now really really want to read the book. Question 13 is of the favourite video that I have made this year. Um, a lot of my videos are just like wrap-ups and hauls and TBRs and stuff like that. I really should probably be more adventurous with the videos that I film. It's always a time issue um, for me and I know I love watching lots of people's vlogs and some people do the most creative ideas for videos and if I had more time maybe that would be me but I find it really hard to do vlogs and stuff when I'm spending a lot of hours working, a lot of hours looking after my children and that kind of thing. But 
I did make one different video this year which was called When Reading Feels Tough and it was just about how I was kind of going through some struggles and I was finding it hard to get into reading. I was finding it a bit overwhelming having lots of books to read which sounds like a really spoiled thing to say but I was just finding reading a bit more tricky there goes my notepad <laughs> and I made a video about that which I did enjoy making and I found it quite therapeutic so that's probably my favourite video that I've made this year and I'll link it in the description box in case you want to go back and watch it and number question number 14 the most beautiful book that I bought this year um I would probably say that it is this one which my lovely friend Hannah actually bought for me as a gift and this is The Things That We Lost by Jyoti Patel. I met Jyoti at the events with Kayla Bazuma Nelson and this is published by Murky Books which is Stormzy's publishing house. Um, I am very excited to read this. I love the colour scheme on the front of this book. Um, this is about a young man who has lost his grandfather and his journey as he goes to university and leaves the family home and it's about the relationship with his mum and the, and it was her dad who died um and JT was um a, a delight to meet and I really am looking forward to reading this book hopefully buddy reading it with my friend Hannah who bought this for me and then the, the final question is books that I really need to read by the end of the year um nothing that is like well book club books would be one library books unless I take them back would be the other I'm not overwhelmed with library books at the moment but I have got a few new releases on order and I also ordered some books that people have been predicting for the Bicker prize just so that I could get my orders in before they had a massive queue <laughs> um so those would be one thing um, I'd like to read more books on my reading goals list so I did go through my reading goals and on the last TBR video I made so I won't go through them all again now um, but yeah I guess just to sort of stick with my goals to read books that I really want to read um, there's nothing that I absolutely have to read apart from my book club books which I choose to with a happy heart I choose to read my book club books because I absolutely love my book club so the books that we've got lined up for that next month's book is Cersei by Madeline Miller which is good because that's on my TBR anyway the next book after that is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams which I've already read and I can't actually go to book club that month because we're away and then after that we've got The Seven Hus Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I really want to read by Taylor Jenkins Reid um so that are the three I will be reading well not um probably not Queenie because I've already read that but the other two books I will be reading so yeah that's all my answers and um i hope you enjoyed watching this tag if you've done this tag please can you tell me so i can go onto your channel and watch it if you haven't got a channel but you just like to tell me some of the answers like especially what's your best book of the year been so far um or anything that you want to particularly share about something that's brought you joy in this year that would be really lovely and any thoughts that you've got on the books that I chose for my answers. So I hope you have a lovely week and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye!